in the mid 80s the magnitude of the AIDS crisis really started to hit home. We saw some of our most creative people taken away from us by this terrible disease. And I just became increasingly convinced that I had to do something. So even though I didn't know anything about virology, I just felt like I had to do something. So my solution to learning about virology was to find a good collaborator who could teach me at least the concepts I needed to get going and then we could work together. So I went to Dennis and got to know him, got to know his uh, postdoctoral fellow Ube Choi, who was actually one of the co-discoverers of FTC and 3TC and um, gave some ideas because he had no, at the time he had no knowledge on nucleoside chemistry. He was working on other things at the time, selenium chemistry and other things. So that's how it all started. We worked together and we drew a few structures on the board and I said, go ahead and make this. And it took his time, but eventually he worked out a beautiful process. And I would say there was a bit of, a lot of experience there in organic chemistry, but also a bit of serendipity. So we got a bit lucky and I won't go into the details, but Lo and behold, we got the a methodology, for example, how to make a certain class of nucleoside known, known as oxothiolane nucleosides or dioxalanes. And subsequent to that, we realized that there were two forms, the left hand and the right hand. And most nucleosides in nature are the right hand nucleosides. Well, guess what? We found the left hand was also active. The left hand turned out to be very active and very non-toxic. So that became actually lamivudine and FTC, believe it or not, based on this discovery, which is a huge discovery. FTC eventually became Mtriva, Mtricitabine. And they loved this drug. It was, it had none of the serious toxicities that AZT or in fact any other drug that was under development had at the time. And then one, oh God. I still get emotional at this one day. I get a phone call from my colleague, Dr. George Painter, uh, who was the team leader for FTC. And he said, Dennis, FTC is dead. So I said, what are you talking about? I said, you guys love FTC. He said it was safe. It's very potent. How is it dead? He said, resistance. It develops resistance very quickly, and it's a profound kind of resistance. He said, patients couldn't take this for very long. That was a pretty damn bad day. It was like, oh my. And by the way, in this business, um, you can invest two, three hundred million dollars in ten years of your life and you wake up one morning, it's all gone. And that's the risk. So, we were stunned, but uh, our group, in this case, led by Raymond Shinazi and a group at Burroughs Welcome, uh, led by another scientists there, who's a good friend of ours, Brendan Larder, uh, both made similar observations that um, these compounds, 3TC and FTC, developed resistance quickly, uh, but when they were used in combination, the development of resistance would be slowed down significantly, but because of that high sensitivity AZT had to this mutant strain, you could use it at much lower concentrations. So all of those side effects that you saw with AZT, the monotherapy, were no longer present. And this became the first rationally designed 
combination therapy for HIV. The synergy between AZT in those patients and lamivudine or FTC was an enormous breakthrough. It led to the first combination drug, Combivir, and that was the first time looking through CDC's reports in the um, weekly morbidity and mortality reports where there was a downward deflection in the death line. It was absolutely correlatable. m by itself is fantastic drug from a scientific perspective, but it's not useful. Just like AZT by itself is not useful, or Viriad by itself is not useful. But when you strategically combine these, you have something that's awesome. So it was no longer a death sentence. HIV was no longer a death sentence. And that was amazing change because mortality dropped from 72% of people who have HIV to less than 25% very rapidly thanks to heart therapy. That's a remarkable, I mean, people were lined out outside my office where I worked because I worked next to a doctor who treated HIV patients and there were a lot of people outside sitting, waiting for being, to be buried. They looked horrible, they looked terrible. We were going to funerals all the time of friends, family, and these patients. And then they stopped, started disappearing. You didn't see them outside your door anymore. And that was remarkable. And I could see that the drugs that we had invented, as well as those of, that other invented, really made a difference and and basically turn this epidemic around but we're not we're not there yet we need a cure for hiv we're not there yet we're making progress and we certainly need better drugs than we currently have we have great drugs but it'd be nice to have better ones but the ultimate goal today is finding a functional cure or a sterilizing cure for hiv and i think it's possible so Give us the resources, we can do the job.